evening. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I get a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Tom, second Henry. Any questions? All in favor? 6 0. Okay, hey, Mr. Poole, Superintendent's Report. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Tim for uh, the first part of the Superintendent's Report. <coughs> so in the high school, uh, earlier today, all high school juniors and seniors were in attendance for an important presentation delivered by members of the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office. The program, Choices and Consequences, is designed to educate younger drivers about the importance of making smart choices in all aspects of their lives. The SWR student-run production, the last day of school will take place Thursday, 427 through Saturday, 429 at 7 p.m. in the high school auditorium. Congratulations to junior Emily Sherrill, who had her haiku poem, Bookmarking Walden, published in Teen Inc. Mag magazine. Congratulations to junior Nicholas Friedlander, who won the award for best feature at Suffolk Community College's radio and TV high school media competition. Nick's video was on the peril and potential of artificial intelligence programs. In sports, congratulations to senior golfer Melanie Hagan, who was named the Newsday's top 10 golfers for the spring of 2023. I would also just like to add, uh, last time I spoke about my college decision, and I have decided to attend Penn State University. Congratulations. Tim, you have, you have a major too. What's your, what's your major? I'm going into the professional golf management program. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Just a few more updates from uh, around the district. Over at the middle school today, I want to thank Detective Mosby from the Suffolk County Police Department, who gave uh, an excellent assembly to each individual grade level uh, designed really to help students um, uh, understand the harmful impact of hurtful words and to support and promote uh, understanding and tolerance between students. So thank you to Detective Mosby and the Suffolk County Police Department. Um, over at Wading River, third grade Aiden, third grader Aiden Archer received a special surprise earlier today when the Suffolk County Police Department SWAT team stopped by Wayne River School with their Bearcat Cruiser to wish him a happy birthday and provide a presentation to the entire third grade. That's a great birthday. <laughs> That's a great birthday. Uh, and then uh, at Wading River, uh, Ranger Eric Powers will be presenting to the entire fifth grade next Tuesday, April 25th, as our young scientists prepare to receive their quail eggs over at Wading River, which is the annual uh, raising of the quail in partnership with the Center for Environmental Education and Discovery. Fifth graders will be assisting in the incubation and hatching of quail that will be raised and released in the local community to help reduce the tick population. So they're always very successful raising the quail. Great program over there. And thank Mr. Paranello for his passion for that program uh, every year. And so it's a lot of work. And uh, I know Mr. Paranello has, a, has his hands deeply involved in that. So it should be great. I look forward to seeing the quails uh, hatch. You can't touch them, though, but I do look forward to seeing the quails over there. Uh, over at uh, Miller Avenue, the Science Fair will be held on Thursday, April 20th. Judges from the Brookhaven National Lab will be coming during the day to view all of our students' projects, and parents will be able to visit uh, the Science Fair that evening. And also at Miller Avenue, they will be hosting the uh, Bash the Trash assemblies on Friday, April 21st, and Bash the Trash. They use musical instruments made from recycled and reused materials to explore the concepts of science, uh, sound, and sustainability. And just one announcement, just a reminder that uh, tomorrow night, uh, thank the Suffolk County Department of Health. They will be giving a, it's just about one hour if you can make it, at 6.30 on the dangers of vaping and edible THC. And that'll be tomorrow night <coughs> at 6.30 here in high school. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up we have our um, budget presentation by Mr. Arcuri. Great presentation tonight. <laughs> they really want me to do a good job. From memory, Glenn. I was going to say, I think I could. <laughs> I think I definitely could have. Thank you. Um, uh, tonight's presentation is our uh, last of our budget development process. Um, it is the fifth presen presentation on the 2023-24 budget. Um, the previous meeting 
back on April April 4th, we were hopeful that the state would have um, adopt their budget at um, prior to the April 4th meeting, and they didn't. And as we are presenting tonight, you will see that there was an extender passed on April 3rd for seven days. There was an extender passed on April 10th for seven days. And now there was an extender passed yesterday for an additional three days. So as of this evening, we do not have a state adopted budget. Um, however, from all the information that's, that's been made available to, to um, uh, schools, the education funding component of the state's budget doesn't seem to be in question. So the guidance that, that districts are being told this year, as has been done in the past, is to rely on the state aid numbers that were provided inside the governor's executive run released on February 1st, 2023. In all budget presentations through this development cycle, we have always been showing state aid as the values listed on uh, February 1st, 2023. So for this year's 23-24 budget, the revenue budget will be set utilizing the state's executive run numbers. Now, when the state does adopt its budget, regardless of when that is, if we adopt a value of state aid that turns out to be different than what the final state aid amount is, it just is going to be reflected in either a shortfall of revenue, if, if state aid happens to be less, or an increase when the books are closed at June 30th, 2024. So it isn't, we don't, again, we, nothing is indicating a material difference. And on $16 million, if, if it's a few thousand dollars off, it is an immaterial figure but it is accounted for properly when we actually receive the revenue. So 2023-24 is, is going to be the last of our uh, grant funded program, program in enhancements from the uh, COVID grants, 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 grants related to the uh, COVID era. During the School day programs, <coughs> full-time elementary math academic interventionist will be supported by grant funds, a 0.5 elementary reading teacher, a district-wide psychologist, high school mentor positions, partial funding to support for the UPK program, and some funds to support professional development. There's about $67,000 allocated for additional equipment to support the outdoor learning spaces at Miller Avenue, Wading River, and uh, the middle school. All three principals have been working with the architect in order to finalize that um, uh, purchase. Um, so we're very close to wrapping that order up so we can have the items in, in place before the start of, the start of school in um, uh, September. As far as extracurricular programs go, we have English as a new language enrichment and support opportunities, as well as the summarized theater program. In speaking with Mr. Meinster, he's pretty confident if everything, if this spending plan goes, if the spending according to this plan goes as, as, as we hope it does, there will be additional funding left in order to support summer of 24-25's summarized theater program that's our ult, ult, ultimate goal is to stretch this, stretch these government grant funds to that following summer and that, and that would be the last program. Any questions regarding what programs are gonna be supported with grant dollars that will more than likely not continue into 24-25 unless there is additional funding allocated for it in the 24-25 budget? No question. Okay. 23-24 budget overview. Um, Maintains all programs that are in 22-23, maintains current class size, lowers the use of reserves, includes enhancements to the program, reflects economies and efficiencies, supports maintenance of facilities, and provides funding to support improvements related to safety and security of both facilities and network infrastructure. Happy to point out here some pictures of uh, this October's home Homecoming, you could see Miller Avenue on the um, uh, left, Wading River on the um, uh, right. Program and facility enhancements, unified bowling for the athletics program, fall cheer program, 
some new electives for the high school, American Sign Language 4, Peer Mentoring Spanish, Community Relations, as well as AP Pre-Calculus. With regard to maintenance projects, new tile around the middle school library, Wading River Library Makerspace, replace security cameras and card access control readers, replace water fountains with bottle filling stations. As far as equipment funding, middle school coral risers, security vehicle, Miller Avenue AP room replacement lunch, lunch tables, lacrosse time clocks, gymnasium wall pad replacement at Miller Avenue, library casework and fixtures at Wading River, and innovative smart furniture for both the high school and middle school. Again, homecoming pictures for middle school on the bottom left and the uh, high school on the bottom right. The um, high school kids did um, uh, floats, so there really wasn't a great picture of actually a group of high school kids, so I just chose to uh, pick the most colorful float from the high school. Universal pre-kindergarten program. The program to date has been fully funded through a combination of state and federal grants, which will remain the case for 23-24. The federal grant funding being applied to cover tuition for the UPK program will expire after the 23-24 school year. For the upcoming school year, the district will continue to partner with St. Anselm's and Scope, each providing up to 36 seats for our students. A lottery was conducted on April 4th to generate the initial list of students who will be <coughs> offered seats in the UPK program, and any student that was not selected on April 4th will um, remain on the waiting will remain on the waiting list and will be called as available slots open. This year we were able to get through the waiting list by January. We were able to get through so there's no one waiting on the waiting list for 22-23 uh, school year. So we're pretty confident that it'll, it'll work similar to the way this school year worked. Tax levy history the last six years. The average increase $636,147 for an average percentage of 1.24%. Important to point out that we've always stayed within the levy limit or below the levy limit. There were two years where we stayed below the levy limit in 2020-21 and a partial in 1920 for a total of $304,820. Important to point out that this has forever decreased the tax levy base. So it's a savings to the taxpayers into any point inside the future until the district ever decides to go above the tax levy limit. But for right now, again, <coughs> continues to generate savings for the uh, taxpayers. Budget history the last six years, average increase of 2.25%. Again, continually shows that the tax cap holds the burden to the taxpayer down lower than the cost to operate the, the, the program. So we continually, we make up that difference by either additional state aid received or by finding economies and efficiencies within the um, uh, budget. 2023-24 budget reflects a 2.16% increase or a little less than $1.8 million. Summary of expenditures, about 72% of our budget is employees' salaries and benefits. Trans transportation makes up a little bit less than 7%. Seven, 7%. Again, key components to operate the school. It's going to be staffing, it's going to be employee benefits, it's going to be transport, transportation. As you can see through, through the entire budget, when you, when you get down to the facility section, it only makes up 3.85% of the budget. The, tech, the, tech, the technology budget is 2.14%. So it really does try to present to you where is the money allocated to in what expense category. Um, any questions on a specific category? Proposed budget summary in three-part form. We are required to present the budget based on what portion of the budget is in pertains to the program component. Pro program is directly relates to students. The capital component, what does it cost to maintain the facility, operate the facility, keep the, keep the um, grounds of, of the um, uh, facility in good working order? And the administrative component, what is the, compo what is the cost associated with 
administrative leadership team, building, building level clerical support team. There are various positions that are tied to the administrative comp component. It's important to present this. You'll see it as part of the six day notice. You'll see it as part of the budget newsletter. These are required publications to show the taxpayers how does our budget break down inside of their three part form. And as you can see, administrative increases by 5.88%, capital 0.56, and program 1.78. Majority of the administrative component increase relates to increases in insurance premiums. There's been large insurance premiums re re related to cyber insurance as well as liability insurance. And that's a large chunk of what that increase is for this particular sc school year. Contingent budget facts, important to point out the tax levy must be no greater than the tax levy for this, for this school year. So it will not be greater than $56,569,724. All organizations, including not-for-profit, using district facilities would be charged. The contingent budget must adhere to the administrative cap requirement. So again, what that's pointing out is if we if we had to go to a contingent budget, we have to reduce the equipment out of the budget. When you, when you look at the increase of the program component, the administrative component cannot be greater than the program component in, in, increase. So it's basically telling you, you can't just take from kids and make it a punitive measure on a contingent budget. You must ensure the administrative component component rises at a percentage less than the impact on kids. It's not something that we really have to focus on today, but it's again a required piece that is included inside <coughs> the six day notice. And that's why it is covered as part of the budget adoption present presentation. Any questions regarding the contingent budget? Revenue budget, again, refresher on state aid, February 1st, 2023, executive budget school aid report was released. Our state aid, which accounts for the fully funding now of our foundation aid. Mm -hmm. So we are now fully funded, restored to the original formula value for Shore and Wading, for Shore and Wading River, which helped us fill our budget gap for 23-24. So with us being fully funded, our state aid is $16,841,888. It's important to point out that if you see this report inside of a public news, newspaper, you will see that value is higher because they also include $513,000 relates to UPK grant funding, but that UPK grant funding doesn't go to your general fund budget. It's not what the taxpayers vote on. It's accounted for inside of a different checkbook, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. So we don't include it inside of our state aid revenue number, but we do present it to the public. In addition, there is $211,581 listed in these uh, newspaper publications that is related to high impact tutoring set aside, which again is a separate bucket from our actual, from our actual state aid. So for this year's 23-24 revenue budget, we're going to use the executive run values. And as I mentioned before, it, that is the value used the February 28th, March 14th, March 28th, and April 4th meetings. State aid breakdown, as I mentioned to you before, foundation aid, you see a $2 million increase. So we originally received our additional million, and then they restored the additional million. So being fully funded, we saw a 25% increase inside of our found foundation aid which is wonderful as it is a recurring revenue. So as state aid went up, the burden on the taxpayer or the burden and dependency on using district reserves or cutting program to balance the budget was not necessary for 23-24. Regarding the other uh, state, aid, state aid categories, you see a slight reduction in private excess cost aid those are expense driven aids. If we don't pay for it, if we don't outlay the money because we don't need that service, we don't get the money back. So on all your expend, 
expense-driven aid categories, high cost, private access, BOCES aid, hardware and technology, software library, transportation. You're seeing the state aid being received based on the expenditure of the previous year. So our books for 21-22 drives what our aid is going to be for 23-24. For so our records that we closed, that's how they project out forward for us. Any questions on, on state aid detail? Pilot and other local revenue? As I mentioned in previous meetings, we are still trying to finalize payment for the LIPA property for the town of Riverhead. So we are doing our projections for closing out 2022-23 school year that we will receive the payments that are owed to us for 21-22 and 22-23, which is about $643,000. We are assuming we're going to receive those funds and we are assuming that our, all the information received to date, the settlement of the agreement that the Board of Education executed um, on March 28th is going to have us fully, fully paid. So we do have the town of Riverhead LIPA pilot of about $321,000 included as a revenue source for 23-24. And it's again very important to note as we include that as a pilot payment it's, it is reducing the burden of the tax levy to the taxpayers. With the exception of the Riverhead pilot, all other pilots have been accounted for with their uh, related increases. <coughs> Adult education tuition, we do project a slight increase. Community programs, a slight increase. Day school tuition, we are projecting a decrease. As I had mentioned previous, previous, previously, Resident tuition is based on what students are being sent to our special education program here at Shoreham from other districts. If they are not high need students, I'm not able to charge a greater value for, for tuition. So my tuition revenue is a little bit lower. In addition to if my classroom student count is higher than the previous year, so if, so if I have eight kids versus five, the distributive share of salary now is greater to the Shoreham kids because I have more students enrolled in that particular class. So I'm carrying a larger burden inside of the general fund budget. So projecting revenue using the 22-23 actuals, we have projected that we do see a slight decrease projected for 23-24. However, it's extremely important to point out resident, non-resident tuition or day, or day school tuition if we have a student coming here, we're going to collect the revenue for it. This is our best projection, but what we are actually providing services for is the money that we will, that we will receive at the end of that school year. Interest and earnings. We started the school year out with very, very low interest rates. <coughs> we're getting fantastic interest rates now. If it continues going, I anticipate that the $35,000 increase, it'll even be higher than that, but we did take a conservative approach to projecting interest earnings for 23-24. Uh, we don't anticipate any change in rentals and use of facilities or miscellaneous revenue. Any questions on pilot and other local revenue? District reserves. We anticipate using no money of the tax reduction reserve to balance the 23-24 budget, approximately a million dollars of the employee retirement system reserve, teachers retirement system reserve. We don't plan on using any of that reserve money to balance the 23-24 budget. Workers' compensation, approximately 550,000, and unemployment, 104,000. With regard to restricted district reserves, we still have a little less than 2.9 million in the employee benefits accrued liability reserve. And as of now, 2021 capital reserve is $1,270,904. Uh, $1, At the end of this school year, as is, as is typical, whatever the surplus funds are at the end of a, at the end of a, at the end of a school year, a portion of it goes to balance the following year's budget. A portion of it goes to your 4% unassigned, unappropriated fund balance. And any of the remaining difference goes to replenish reserves that were used or goes to add to restricted reserves. 
That, that decision is not finalized until the audit's finalized sometime around August, September. But we do anticipate additionally funding reserves at the end of 22, 23, 23, 23 school year. Tax levy limit calculation, we anticipate a 1.6054%. That's our maximum tax, tax levy limit amount. We are levying to the um, uh, limit. And the only caveat with regarding the tax levy limit calculation is if building aid should materially change in the final adopted budget, if they give us more building aid, then the tax levy limit could change, will change, because building aid is a, is a component to the tax cap calculation. Mm -hmm. From what I've been told, our building aid is staying, is staying static, as with mostly other districts, because we don't have a project in flux between October when they took that capture. We didn't close out any additional projects that might change our building aid. Mm -hmm. So we don't anticipate it. If something does occur that we didn't plan for, we, we might be coming back to modify the tax levy, levy limit calculation. If we get less building aid, which means the tax levy limit would be higher, we don't plan on doing anything. We would just not levy to the limit then at that, at that point. Revenue budget, again, I just, I just have the green square around state aid to say that's the only open, com open component. And the year-to-year -year support budget summary, 2.16 expenditure budget and uh, 2.16 revenue budget. You see a decrease in other local revenue, primarily related to uh, school tuition. You see an increase in state aid. You see an increase in the tax levy. And you see a slight decrease in appropriated fund balance. You see a decrease in not using teachers' retirement system and a large decrease related to unemployment reserve. We don't have, we don't anticipate accessing people at the end of this school year. You saw a large amount in 22-23 due to the layoffs from 21-22 with the abolished positions directly related to COVID, such as the custodial aides, such as the additional cleaners, those additional nurses' aides. So with those positions eliminated at the end of 21-22, we had high exposure of unemployment for 22-23. We don't, we don't consider any type of an exposure for 23, 24. Any, any questions? Glenn, I just, I just sure. wanted to go back to uh, the pilots on page 19 real quick. Yep. The, the LIPA Brookhaven pilot, is that the um, guest peaker units that are up? Yes. Okay. And then Cross Sound one, um, Cross which, Sound. which one's which with <coughs> the FTS project and the Shoreham Solar? FTS is across from the middle school. Okay. And Shorm Solar is a little bit east of the transportation first, first student, right back behind there. Okay. And there was a difference, I guess, or an increase of 42,000 in the pilots mm -hmm. this year. Um, sorry, I'm just getting back to the slide. So do you know offhand where, sure. where that's coming from? That every, every year, pilots have a contractual increase built in, built in, into them. They actually range between one and one and three percent. So, based on each pilot's value, you'll see a slight I increase. I can provide a detailed a detailed schedule for you, but I don't each have the exact number. Though, each right? one is different. Yes. Okay. And are there provisions for each pilot in terms of renegotiating the value of them? Over a period of time, I guess there the, there is a um, a new state law that does require the um, industrial development agency to notify the school district if a recipient of a pilot is trying to reopen their contract. They have to notify the district if a recipient of a pilot is, um, for lack of a better word, choosing to go out of business or pack up their peaker to leave. They have to notify the district immediately upon any notification from that pilot recipient. Um, that law was passed starting this December 31st or January 1st, maybe. And that's all that I have right now. I could tell you we do have contracts with them, meaning when I say we have, we have 
contracts. The Town of Brookhaven Industrial Development Agency has entered into pilot contract agreements. We are a recipient, a fire district is a recipient, so we are part and parcel to that contract, but we don't negotiate the contract. Right. I'm, I just get the outcome of someone else's yeah. contract. Understood. Do we, do we the, the school district, actually have the terms and agreements of those? We do. From IDA? <coughs> we actually do. Okay. I'd like to see them at some point. I'd be happy to uh, put that information. The district treasurer, we actually re recently foiled all of them, have copies of okay. each and every one to make sure that our filed records match or records they have. It was advised by council every three to five years, continually foil them to ensure. But with this new law that came on, I wanted to have what they have in their books right, right. to what we have in our file cabinets to make sure that now we could just stay ab abreast. But it's still very important to know that a pilot recipient has more power and control than the school district that has zero. Yeah, and the burden is rests with the taxpayer. So then if a pilot, when there's a pilot payment part of the tax levy limit, what it's saying is if the tax levy is $400,000 and there's a pilot of $100,000, $300,000 is the burden of the remaining taxpayers. Forget state aid, forget all the other revenue components. If the pilot recipient says, I'm going out of business, I'm no longer gonna be a solar farm, it's gonna be vacant property, the dirt goes back on the books as a taxable property, so a portion of the 100000 will be absorbed by the dirt. But as far as the generation of profit, which is what that pilot's based on, falls back on the remaining taxpayers. So whatever that percentage is, someone in the tax assessor's office that does that calculation for us, the district is still made whole, but it's always at the burden of the remaining tax base. That's, that's what a pilot is. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Coming up to the budget hearing, um, that's, going, that's going to be May 2nd. Our budget newsletter is soon, to be, is, soon, is soon to be released. Once the budget's adopted this evening, we will finalize numbers and um, get the budget newsletter out. Um, next week, we are presenting April 26th to the Shoreham Civic Association meeting, as well as April 27th at the Wading River Civic Association meeting. And um, May 8th, PTA Council meeting. And May 16th, budget vote here in the high school, auxiliary, uh, high school main gym. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arcuri. <coughs> Next up, we have votes and resolutions. Can I get a motion to approve April 4th, the meeting minutes? Uh, Tom, second Megan. Any discussion or questions? We just need um, Mike and Jim to abstain. Um, can I get a vote to approve the minutes? Uh, four, um, abstain, two, zero. Can I get a motion to approve the CPSC CSC 504 meeting summary from April 5th? Tom, second Megan, any discussion or questions? All in favor, six, zero. There are five curriculum instruction resolutions. Um, can I get a motion to approve 300 through 304? Tom, second Henry. Um, is it okay to take these as a block? Mm -hmm. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Six, zero. Next we have our business operations resolutions. There are 20 of these. Can I get a motion to approve 305 through 324? Tom, second Henry. I'll take these as a block as well. All in favor? Just a question. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry that's okay. <coughs> for, for a lot of the um, capital improvements or the, or the projects, whether maintenance or renovations, what, what's the schedule for, for the work? Sure. Um, these, these are uh, considered maintenance projects. They, they aren't capital projects. The plan is to engage the contracts right after the board takes action this um, uh, evening. We will begin any prep work after, after school hours, when and where possible, and um, try to have them wrapped up as soon as possible. Some will be done over the um, a summer, but all of the preparation work begins to occur now. You really can't, 
execute this July 1st and try to get the work done between July and August. So it's very, very important to schedule this earlier so that I get on the contractor schedule. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Curie, does the, does the music work happen over the summer? Does the? Mu the music work? Yes. The, well, it's primarily going to start probably the second that Mr. Pugliese tells me I can get into the buildings in those hallways. Because if there isn't testing going on inside of those locations, we could start earlier. So we, we want to get in as soon as, as soon as possible. So whenever the area is, if I could get into a hallway and, and, and the work can get done over a four day period, because the quicker I get the contractors in that are doing much larger projects between July 1st and August 31st. Yeah. So Mr. Mr. Rossini works closely with Mr. Pugliese <coughs> to see what areas of the building are available during the uh, testing, testing time. The main objective is to get as much work completed before June 30th because we are using 22, 23 funds. But again, in order to lock in the contractors, sometimes it does extend into the early part of um, uh, July. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions? No? All in favor? Six, zero. Can I get a motion to vote on our personnel agenda? Jim, second Megan. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Six, zero. Okay. <coughs> We have one communication. Thank you. <laughs> Just an announcement, uh, Ms. Katie Anderson, Mr. Michael Lewis, and Mr. Henry Perez will be running unopposed in the upcoming board election on May 16th, 2023. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for all your hard work getting the election together. I appreciate yeah. it. Okay, can I get a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? Tom, second Jim, all in favor? Six zero. All right, we got you out in time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.